Watching and learning from your mistakes is the fastest way to improve your game. Xbox Go makes sports tracking phone mounts using AI. Their budget version is the cheapest in the market. This is the one I'll be reviewing along with the tripods that they offer. All right, here's the unboxing. And you have instruction manual, the gimbal itself, and then there's the tripod, and then here is a bag to hold it. And here is a lanyard, as well as the USB-C cable. So let's see what's in the bag is roughly just the right amount of size for that. All right, and then the gimbal. And you see how it unlocks? There's a clip, unlocks. Right, and there it is. And then put that aside, let me just show you. And here is the tripod that goes into here. And here is the unboxing of the remote. There's a manual here. And here is the remote. And there's a button battery, I assume. You can just turn this off. And there's this little thing to remove and make sure you. To turn on the remote, you got to hold down the power button for three seconds and then you see it flash. I'm gonna show you how quickly I set this up. So I pop the tripod on so you can stand this up. So it's nice, it's got nice rubber feet here. So it's got grip, pop that there. Let me pick that up and notice here, it tells you that your phone needs to be pointing up here. So the phone upwards like that, there's a slot in the back. So you could just pull it out like that and you put it here. You notice that it's not touching the volume buttons because it's got a little notch in here to accommodate the volume button. But notice that my phone has to be outside the case. Otherwise the case is going to be in the way of the clamp. I went straight to the app and to add a device, I'm going to turn this on, it turns on and the gimbal is automatically detected. It, I don't have to go to any Bluetooth settings or anything like that. And the remote, I just hold on the power button turns on and notice that this also connected as well. So everything connects quite quickly. Unboxing of the tripod. First, you gotta turn counterclockwise to unlock it. You don't have to turn all the way, so it comes out. And then as it comes out, these things start locking into place, these little beads. And it comes out and locks into place. So you see it comes out and locks into place and then you then tighten this. And then it stays locked as you tighten this, it stays locked. This stops it from going in, stays locked, and stays locked all the way till the end. Now, so how do you put it back in? Sorry, I didn't pull it out of the way. How do you put it back in is that you unscrew this back. So this releases this now, all right? So then you could push it. And then once it goes in, you see this thing automatically pushes the rod, yeah. The springs back in so you could, you could push it and then the next one will push this bead back inside you gotta be careful yeah and it goes in and it goes in and it completely retracts and then so you tighten it here's the t4 tripod and the whole setup when folded is 110 centimeters let me just unzip this here's the tripod and you see this little bag here is a weight bag. Let me show you what it does. You could put water bottle here to hold it down. It's held by Verco. Um, where you could fill it with sand. I recommend putting the sand in the Ziploc and you just pop it inside. And you're meant to hang on this in the cross beam so it could uh, stabilize it against wind. These are side-by-side -side images of T1 and the T4 tripod. This is recorded on my iPhone 14. Here are the settings available in the app. You could toggle with the timestamp the zoom, the actual tracking, and adjust the pan angle. And also you could adjust the maximum pan speed. Unfortunately, there's no option to remove the watermark on the lower right hand side. If you're annoyed by it, I would suggest covering up with your own logo. So this is what the setup looks like on top of a T4 tripod. And this tripod can go up to 13 feet. 
So we're back in the view of the camera and I'm going to raise the tripod and you can see what difference it makes. Notice the footage is quite shaky as I move it up. The gimbal is not actually there to stabilize it. It's actually used to track the ball instead. So this is the footage at its highest point and I'm going to put the ground footage side by side so you could compare the difference between the two. So at a higher point of view, there is less overlap between players. So notice how it's tilting up to track the ball, which is quite good. It's using all the axes available. It's not just panning left and right. At this point, I purposely sway the tripod to mimic wind and see what it looks like. And just to test if the gimbal is actually able to compensate it, the gimbal is not meant to stabilize the image. It's actually used for tracking only. But the tripod is relatively stable. It's still usable footage. Here's a list of all the sports activities that it is designed to track. Notice some are still in beta phase, meaning it's still under development. In regards to its performance, I agree with this Reddit comment, which said it catches about 90% of the action. Performance reduces dramatically if another ball ends up in the frame. Here's an example where it starts tracking the basketball and then it somehow loses its tracking because there are these basketballs in the lower left corner and it just locks into that. When this happens, I recommend using the remote to adjust or have the camera follow a person instead of a ball or consider their more advanced model called the Chameleon. I've seen some reviews saying that this is more accurate. It's probably due to the extra built-in camera and more advanced processing chip. It costs $150 more, but it comes with a remote and you can record in 4K. Both the budget and the advanced models are not waterproof. I recommend buying a Pram umbrella to attach it to the tripod. I'm gonna show you the various gimbal modes. Let me first turn this on. Now you gotta hold it down. There we go, and it starts off at portrait mode. Sometimes it remembers your last orientation, uh, but it sometimes it doesn't. Uh, what it doesn't remember is also the modes that you're in, the various gimbal modes. And what those modes are is locking these axes in place. So you got three of these axes, and, some, and when you lock them, it won't spin as you move your hand. So right now it always starts at half follow, and that locks this, so that when I go like this, it's always pointing at this. It's locked, right? Whereas I could move it like that, right? And then, oh, this is also locked. This axis is locked. So it's locking these two. So it's just freeing this. And the next one is LF. And what that is, is locking everything in place. And this is also locked. So it's always pointing at the post-it no matter how I turn it. Now, when you change to FPV, it means first person view, I guess. it Everything is following all your rotations and movement. The next one is AF, which is all follows. And it locks this axis but it follows this. Also notice something interesting here in AF is when you, sorry, it actually happens in this mode. Let me change to landscape mode. When you move it like this, it flips the phone over. If you go too much, it flips it over. But in FPV, it locks it in place as in it follows. Let's check the other modes. So half follow. Yeah, this is this also does that. It's so it's meant to just it's meant to lock this. But if you go to a certain um, a certain tolerance, it thinks that you're trying to film things upside down. And the joystick just does the usual, and this is what you control while it's locked in place. So you could readjust the lock, and then you double click this, and it resets back to shooting forward. There is a zoom in, zoom out slider, but I don't think it's supported. It's not indicated in the manual. Thank you for reaching to the end. If you'd like to see more of these videos, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.